you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online, and you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the show. So glad to be back with you guys again. I have my good friend, brother from another mother here, Christopher David Jackson, to help steer the ship today. Howdy, Chris. Yo, yo, yo. How are you, my friend? Amazing. Here we go again. It's like a good Groundhog Day sort of thing. <laughs> we were just talking about Groundhog Day, actually. Maybe you should share your insight um, because it, it could be helpful. We'll just jump right in. Since okay. I just said it's a good Groundhog Day and you just shared an insight related to Groundhog Day, which is probably why I thought to say that, um, and uh, re- relating to weed. Because I know there's yeah. a lot of people out there who it's it's obviously becoming now it's it, it's wild, like – my house right next right next to my house. Well, first off, guys, you, some of you who've been listening for a long time, you've heard my crazy Omar story, which any of you are interested, you can go back to episode number two. But now the closest billboard to my house, just someone put Omar up on it in big letters. So it's, it's there looming right outside my door almost. But before that, it was an advertisement for buying weed. Like, I I was looking at it, you know, maybe a few months ago when it was still like, you know, whatever, a a billboard. And for some of you guys, like in the Midwest or wherever other countries, that's a weird concept to think about, right? Like a billboard to come to the weed store and buy weed, an advertisement. So anyway, Chris, your your um, insight on on weed and smoking weed regularly, Um, and and I'm sure you know there are some people who maybe it will have. A profound impact others might say i don't know if that applies to me and everything and in between but since since i brought up groundhog day why don't you just share that for anyone who may benefit from it well yeah first i i just want to say like I, um my feeling is that everything has a value mm. right and it's like knowing what those values are though and using them you know in a way that serves us in our highest rather than getting used by them yeah and, you know, and being unconscious in our use mm. of things, you know. And so there's a difference also between, I think, looking at these things as medicines or using them as drugs. Right. Um, you know, and then I notice, like, I just, I, I had a, an awareness that all of the people in my life that were daily cannabis smokers mm-hmm. um, or users, that there was kind of a similar thing that I was experiencing with a lot of them where it was like, they would have breakthroughs in certain parts of their life. And then it was almost as though two weeks later or a week later, that breakthrough never happened. Mm. It was, and that's where I said it was like groundhog day. I felt like I've seen this common thread of arrested development Mm. in people who use it all the time that they, they don't, seem to move forward, you know? And then what I started just feeling into the energy of that medicine. And I noticed like, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen or read the botany of desire, but Mm, it's 
such an amazing book and documentary um, that really talks about the consciousness of plants. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that they highlighted that was brilliant was they talked about how um, THC, you know, well, first they they started with there's this thing in our brains, these... um, you know, receptor sites that's main function is to help us forget things, you know, and you'd ask yourself the question, why would I, why would my brain want to forget things? And and then they explain, well, you know, when you think about how many messages you take in a day, you know, how much of that content do you really need to remember? Yeah, not a lot. You don't, you don't want to like over write your hard drive with a bunch of shit. Yeah. You know, so when you go to sleep at night, your brain dumps. It does a memory dump. You know, basically all of your RAM, random access memory, which is everything that you had happen during that day, Mm -hmm. it looks to see what stuff is important, write the important stuff to the hard drive, and kick everything else out. It's a trip. And then if there's something old that you're overwriting, like let's say that you had old information and now you had new information today that's better, you know, you will forget the old information and overwrite write it with the new so this is great you know and it's a great way of understanding you know our brains and also seeing how computers were actually designed off of our brains right you know modeled off of it and and it gives now it makes it easier for us to understand how our brains function because we tend to be more related to how computers work than we do our own minds right so the brilliance in this is that like THC binds to those receptor sites that help you forget things Mm. and so what it is essentially is now you actually don't get to choose what you're forgetting, Mm. but it's deselective memory loss. Mm. It means like, so the the funny thing is like, I see that that medicine is being really a great energy of opening up super and and releasing, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's like a great, like releasing all the shit you've had today. Like you, you know, you Mm -hmm. take a hit or take some THC or cannabis and it's like, Oh, I can relax. You know, and then also kind of forget some of the traumatic shit that's happened potentially, you know, but then when you, when you're using it every day and like you're having breakthroughs or, or things that would move you forward in your path or life journey, there's also the possibility that it could keep you from integrating Mm. those things. And it's just something to be conscious of. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting insight. And I'm sure, you know, and, and of course, we're all completely unique individuals having completely unique experiences so there are probably people who can really relate to ah like this is like a aha moment for you if you've felt trapped in a re- repeating cycle over and over there may be others of you who say well no I feel like I'm growing and learning and I, I use regularly I can take uh, myself as an example I um, I will use cannabis uh, uh, every now and then not very much when I was younger I used it pretty frequently and it's funny. One of the things that I've sort of done, um, sort of habitually, is um, is smoking uh, marijuana when I'm watching a movie. Like I enjoy watching a movie, and I can relate to this because I think a lot of times with movies, you know, like my son Bradley, who's like you know studying every movie under the sun and wants to watch every movie that exists as he's you know pursuing acting, and he'll ask me about movies, and I'm like, I think maybe I've seen it. I don't know. So I have this whole thing with. Even some movies that I really enjoy, I'll get into watching them like, oh, I've already seen this. So I have like definitely experienced that forgetfulness where that's concerned. Yeah. And I mean, I guess some people could argue, well, you get to watch it and enjoy it again for the first time. Yeah. But y'all have this moment where I'm watching. I'm like, hold on. This is familiar. Hold on. Yeah. I've seen this. Like, So anyway, that that's just a little little squirrel tangent there for you guys to, to go down today. Uh, and what we're going to do... Um, you know, some some bullets here that we want to touch on. One is a question that came in. It was really like a review slash feedback slash uh, question concern from Melanie Larson. And she wrote in, and I'm going to just read this because I want to speak to it for a minute. She said, hi, Brandon. I love, love, love your podcast. I've given review before and it was read online, which of course, yay. <laughs> I'm 63 years young and been seeking all my life. I've listened to many other podcasts and by far this one has been my go-to every time. I love others also. Listen to the adult chair with Michelle, but nothing compares. I came from a very abusive upbringing, sexual, emotional, and physical abuse. I was... I always felt alone in my thoughts and unable to love. It took many years to let go of anger and allow myself to forgive. Listening to your podcast has helped me see that everyone has a story, even those who mistreat you. They have a story. It's all about love to me. 
If I judge or feel anything different, I use my relaxing breath. And when I'm doing my daily yoga, I think about that person or situation and it, van- and, and it vanishes. Just a touch of my thoughts and beliefs, Melanie. And then she went on to write right after, I have one thing that I want to comment on. I totally get that it's my trigger and I'll seek a calm about it. But I just listened to a podcast with Sarah Wu um, and I loved it very much until she made her dump Trump remark. Brandon, she spoke about love, loving everyone, and then threw in that little judgment, and yes, it was a judgment. You could hear her tone and energy change. I was very sad and then lost the meaning of her message. I am not a Trump supporter, but I am a supporter of all and what I'm a supporter of all and whatever paths uh, someone chooses. I found her remark hypocritical, and like I said, I will search in me why I was triggered. So Melanie, thank you for taking the time to write all that. Thank you for your wonderful, lovely, amazing feedback. It means the world to to hear that I'm, you know, myself and Chris and all the other incredible guests are touching your life in, in a meaningful way. Um, I think this is a really excellent example of something that has come up quite a bit and I want to touch on is, you know, first, at first, you're talking about how much you're accepting of everything. Now, if you notice, it's so, such an interesting phenomenon, Chris, because it's always in any time I'm reacting to someone or not liking something that they're doing. I can't get too far down that road. till I'm like, hold on. What is this telling me about myself? Like, why? How? How am I doing this? It's like you, the, the whole idea. You don't see others as, you know, they are. You see them as you are. Mm-hmm. Right. So in this case, Melanie, what I'm seeing here is in feeling is you are. Uh, instantly, like, it, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You're saying, oh, Sarah is this thing in my mind. She's great. I love her. I love her. Oh, all of a sudden, Sarah's triggered, and you see her her pain, her blockage, her trigger come up. And then, as you said here, it, everything, I, I was very sad and then lost to the meaning of her message. Yeah. And I think that's something that we, you really need to analyze because – her message was brilliant from what I remember. Um, and I wasn't smoking weed during the, the session. Um, <laughs> but from what I remember of recording with Sarah, she was incredible. And throwing the baby out with the bathwater is a mistake. She's a human who's doing the, her, she's on her path of growth and evolution and learning. And we're, we're constantly going in and out of different like vibrational resonance, right? Different frequency, literally all day, every day. She may have been in a moment early on where you're like, high vibe, high vibe, high vibe. All of a sudden, she took it to a place where she's reactionary. That right. doesn't have anything to say about what she was bringing forth before. And in this case, it's causing you to do the exact same thing well what comes up for me actually was one of my biggest breakthroughs and that like i've come into this world as you know what i feel is a a center for unconditional love Mm -hmm. right and what i one of the biggest breakthroughs for me was actually realizing that unconditional love was a condition Mm -hmm. and and it was getting in my way because i would be unconditional love with people until i felt like they weren't being unconditional love. Mm-hmm. And then I would use that as my condition for withdrawing my love, <laughs> which meant I wasn't actually being unconditional. And so I just reframed the entire thing is just being love. Mm. There is no condition or uncondition to mm-hmm. it. So just by listening to everything as love and being love, that that was essentially a, a cleaner center point yeah. for me. Yeah. And you know, that I'm hearing something very similar here in that, you know, we talked about loving everyone mm-hmm. and being unconditional love, but then oh until you know <laughs> and, until she's not. And then that becomes, you know, your ability to separate from her and 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 withdraw or pull back. You know, and the truth is is like <clears throat> we're all constantly working to stay centered and being the pure love that we are. Yeah. And and by listening to everything as pure love, seeing everything as pure love, you actually transmute it into its highest, you know, frequency and possibility or, or maybe not highest, actually, let me say most expansive. Yeah. Cuz it's not about the higher or the low here, it's actually the middle point, right? Yeah. Our hearts. Right. And and I think that's where, you know, yeah, you can always listen to everything through that. And here, even when somebody's lodging a complaint or expressing anger, it's really just another form of love. Yeah. You know, they're speaking out of like anger tends to be like love that's unaddressed, repressed, unheard or unseen. Right. 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 And and so it expresses as is anger to try and get 
or take back what it feels has been taken from it. Right. Um, yeah. And if like to our capacity of hearing that, it's like anybody can say anything to you and you will always be empowered, you know, by being the pure love that you are. Right. Right. And when you really look at this, I mean, what's happening here is I, I love <laughs> how what uh, uh, it's, it just becomes this bouncing mirror back and forth. And with Melanie and what she's saying here, it's like she's literally doing what she didn't like right. that Sarah's doing right. and judging the judgment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's like, um, and we've all been there. Right. So yeah. this is, it's, it's like really from the highest, mo- the, the, the most expanded perspective, let's say, um, it's, a, it's a, a giant thank you as an order for Sarah for actually giving the opportunity for this to be presented for her, for you to have that reaction, then for someone to take it, you know, objectively and sort of analyze it in the way that we're doing. It's much yeah. easier for me to do it to you than it is to myself. Right. And cause I've done the exact same thing. This happens. You guys have heard me talk about this with my brother, who's my business partner. You know, we're two years apart. We've been very close our whole lives. There's no one who I see this bounce back of, you know, we, we went through this thing for years of where he's like, Brandon, you got to stop reacting the way you do when, we get heated and you know you can't you you react and it just like and i'm like you mean i gotta stop doing what you're doing right now and and it's like he'll that'll just get him going more it just keeps going and it's like and and then i'd get so frustrated because he doesn't even see that he's actually doing the exact same thing he's like it's very much like oh everyone knows it about you ask mom ask dad you know everyone knows you do this thing you do i'm like who does this thing? Like, are you sure? Well, and then you just end up ping ponging it <laughs> so, back and forth instead of like really like the, the way to transcend it is just to listen and be. To- you're totally right. You're yeah. totally right. But like he, it's like then I get so frustrated. I'm like you, you hypocrite. Like you're not higher or mightier or and that's me not taking the highest road and how I'm dealing. No, with no, it. it's you. It actually is you taking the highest road because in that moment you're telling him he's a hypocrite, so you're pulling him down off the pedestal to put yourself up right, on the pedestal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's too many mirrors no, here. I Let you me down. out. No, I knock you down. <laughs> Let, no, I knock you down. <laughs> Let me out of the house of mirrors, please. Yeah. So it is. Um, it is a beautiful thing, and it's a beautiful gift uh, that Sarah has given you, Melanie. Congratulations on that. Um, <laughs> moving right along. Oh, and for any of you guys who want to write in questions, Brandon at positivehead.com, or get on the Facebook group, which is Positive Heads with an S. Um, it's a private group, so you can open up with personal things and share with the the rest of the group and amazing amazing um soul fam connecting there and and you can ask questions there as well but um chris why don't we continue a little bit uh you know for these last few weeks as you've been exploring um a new uh relationship a relationship and you've been having a lot of breakthroughs and and you know, in your own growth, in your own uh, path with what I always talk about on the show. It's like, guys, I, you all know I have very strong opinions and I think I'm pretty wise in a lot of ways. When it comes to relationships, those romantic relationships, especially, it's the most like challenging uh, interactions we can get in. Yeah. Uh, and the, the place where at times I feel like, okay, I'm sort of an infant and in my you know, understanding and, and I've grown tremendously, but there's just, it's so nuanced. And you talk about the mirrors and, you know, well, they're the this. most significant to yeah. us and whatever we give significance to, we actually put the biggest walls up yeah. against. Yeah. It's like, you know, cause that's, that has the biggest thing at stake for us. It's like, if we give our love to somebody, you know, our ultimate vulnerability, yeah. you know, and then feel shot upon, then that really hurts more than anything else. Yeah. So instead we end up, you know, becoming the shitter, mm-hmm. you know, and the asshole. I'll shit on you first. <laughs> yeah. Without even realizing it, you know, and this is what leads me into like this great realization in this this current, you know, relationship that I'm in, you know, where I've just found this glorious woman who's probably the most amazing woman I've ever come into contact with. And at the same time, I'm also seeing that where I'm at has a big part to play in it, you know, in having done all of this work and seen all of, 
you know, these relationships I'd had in the past and seeing that, oh, I was the asshole Mm -hmm. who shit all over them. Even when I had seen it all along as like that I was a victim, Mm -hmm. you know, it's transcending that and seeing that, oh, basically... You know, it, it's all the reflective, the, the mirrors thing again. Mm-hmm. It's like we always wait for somebody else to go all in, mm-hmm. you know, before we will. Right. And by doing that, you know, we constantly send signals to them of basically our discomfort, you know, and, and it comes down to like if I'm holding back, I'm coming from a place of there's something wrong. Mm-hmm. And so immediately what I'm doing is I'm giving you my condition to experience that there's something wrong Mm -hmm. and you will tend to experience it subjectively through your own insecurities as though there's something wrong with you. Right. Rather than seeing that me showing up, you know, as something is wrong is a, you know, all about where I'm at. Right. And not taking it on, you know, that's where we link into these perfect relationships because we perfectly reflect each other's um, what some people call pain bodies right you know and then we rub up against each other's wounds perfectly right and it's like oh it's so divine and then the very thing that attracts us to each other is the literally connected to the very thing that we can't stand at the end right tearing us apart Right, right, right. And it's it's sort of like, you know, and that makes a lot of sense when you think about, you, you know, hot and cold just being, you know, variations of the same thing or love and hate. It's like, you know, different temperatures. It's, it's all the same thing looking at it through two different. It's like for every, you know, like the higher you ascend, there needs to be, you know, you hear it say like for really like spiritually advanced people, the, the concept or the idea of like, well, they went through hell. You know, they've had to yeah. dig down deep roots. To really get to the highs of heaven, you have to go to the depths of hell to really experience. I almost think of darkness in this context as like the container. The deeper, the dark. Mm hmm you experience the higher the light yeah. you can experience like it's literally the container that holds the light yeah it makes me think of this book one of my first books and i've read from it a long time ago um it's called the psychic explorer and it's a um it's a random book I've, i don't know anyone else who's ever had it or read it and i found it i don't know 20 years ago in in nashville i think in some little bookstore but the guy it's all um his experience is uh, traveling in the astral plane, right? And then at the end, he has all these channelings, and I read the channeling from the Earth Spirit, and it, it's so beautiful. A lot of people commented after I read from it maybe a year ago or so, and it's just, like, very beautiful and eloquent in the spirit of the Earth, you know, Gaia speaking through and, and bringing this message. And one of the things that she said is that's always stuck stuck with me in that channeling was, you know, talking about her evolution as a planetary being Mm -hmm. she's like in one sense i am last in this system the solar system we're in but in another i'm first you know because of the unique trajectory that i've chosen with all of you on me you know uh growing and evolving and incarnating and 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 she said uh the greater one toils for their freedom the greater the sense of freedom that's attained and that's part of the path of Mm -hmm. humanity and her you know, uh, planetary path, you know, of evolution. And I thought that was just really insightful and profound and just as really resonated. It's just always stuck with me. So that's, that's something that I think I like there's, that. there's a lot of truth to that. I feel there is anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely would agree. Um, so I any, guess br- any other insights from, well, I guess your- bringing this back to like the realization of, you know, every relationship that I've had in the past, like there was a common denominator in all of them. Hmm. And that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. And then you start to see the pattern, you know, of like how similar most of those would end up. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, again, the common denominator is me. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So how am I causing all of that? And then that actually, you know, through those questions, I started to see that, oh, it's my perception, Mm -hmm. my perceptions, deception of things. And like what I would tend to do is enter into these, like not feeling safe, 
you know, and this goes all the way back to, you know, core wounds with my own mother, you mm-hmm. know, as a child. How many people are entering relationships with that as the foundation? I don't feel fully safe for yeah. whatever reason. Yeah. And so by not feeling fully safe, I actually hold back mm-hmm. and then I look to see any danger Mm -hmm. signs right right and as i do that invariably i'm going to find some things that will suggest to me that there is danger and then i start paying attention to those things and i expand them Mm. and and then before i know it the grass that was greener always turns a shittier shade grass. <laughs> once I get there. And like, again, you know, I keep seeing it as, oh man, this just isn't the one. Oh man, this just isn't the one. Gosh, you know, am I ever going to find it? And what I, what I recently discovered is that, well, I'm not finding the one because I'm not the one. Right. And because by me not being safe and being responsible for my own safety, and trusting myself and my ability to forgive and grow instead always looking to find somebody else that I can place that power on to. Yeah. You know, I'm constantly disempowering myself and then disempowering them and the relationship. Right. You know, so it always was like bringing it back to my center, you know, where can I be responsible? And now what I realize is that, you know, just going all in. Here's the deal is no matter what, like whether it works out or it doesn't, that's what it's going to be at the end of the day. But I know for certain that if I don't go all in, it's definitely not going to work out. And I'm going to be the person at the end of the day that was responsible for it. Right. Right. Yeah. When what you're saying makes me think of, um, you know, race car drivers. And I, I don't know if you've ever heard this. If you're a race car driver, they train you. If you start spinning, the worst thing that you can do is look to the wall because you're supposed to look away from the wall as you're kind of c- come out of the spin. Because right. if you look at the wall, 100% you, the wall. you hit the wall. 100%. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, do not look at the wall. Do not look at the wall. And I think that's like a really interesting, yeah. like, um, yeah, thing or, to or apply. perhaps think in the positive, like, look at the track. Yeah, look yeah, at the yeah. Track, right. Look exactly. at the track. Exactly. Yeah. So that you, your focus is constantly where you want to go instead of where you don't want to go. Yep. Cause when you focus on what you don't want, you end up creating it. And yep. this is like law of attraction. Yep. This is, you know, so many different teachings. Yeah. Um, and for me, I actually even think it goes beyond attraction to emanation. That Emer- the law of emergence. Yeah. Like, you literally emanate whatever you're focused on. It's like, well, all the possibilities play out and, infinite timeline so they all exist and live eternally so what emerges is which one which one are you watering Focused yeah on. which yeah. which seed are you watering with yep. your with your consciousness which is the, totally you know the food of the universe if you will so yeah oh and and then the thing that like adds to that i would say is just noticing you know we, we constantly look to almost uh audit people Mm -hmm. in relationships and this is something that i've noticed too that's kind of a disservice is like i'll start quizzing somebody right away to see if we're compatible right right well do you like the same things i like yeah do you like this and then as soon as i start getting you know too many no's and i'm like oh you know i don't think we're compatible but you know what the the reality is is like have you ever found somebody that was so amazing that you actually felt inspired to do things you never thought you would do or try things you never thought that you'd be interested in right and only to find yourself like in a whole new you right. than you ever believed possible right. so here's the thing is none of that shit even matters like really at the end of the day if we're just present to being all in for you know and and being present to the fullness in every person mm. we're going to find so much love and so many relationships that you can literally take your pick of yeah. what's going to serve you most and in the process you will have so many more amazing connections friends and people that feel uplifted by your presence that your life just starts scaling up yeah. like dramatically yeah yeah, it makes me think of um, a story that I read a long time ago, and I'm not sure if it was true or just someone made it up, but nonetheless, I, I think it, what it was based on is is 
really sound. And it was talking about, and, and it's kind of funny now because I think, yeah, they're split. Brad, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And oh, this yeah. is going back like 10 years ago, though. And I guess they were having a lot of trouble in their relationship, according to the story. And she was anorexic and, you know, they're, they were on the way out. Right. And he said that he just started only focusing on, he stopped focusing on all the problems and issues that he was having with her and just like would bring her flowers and just focus all his energy on all the goodness that was her and that he had, she right. brought him in the past and really just like, like laser focused, like giving no, you know, attention or energy to yeah, all yeah. the problems. And he said, you know, she just all of a sudden transformed. She started eating again and right. the relationship healed itself. And yeah. when you start realizing that there are no others, these are all props in your movie in yeah. a sense it's all, all screens extensions. to reflect yeah. back to us are the quality of our attention the yeah. quality of right. our beliefs and yeah. our thoughts start yeah. making those people in your lives uh creating them as this next greatest and greatest versions of themselves yeah. literally you are creating them with your energy and you are literally yeah. sifting and shifting timelines with your beliefs and thoughts yeah. and judgments about them yeah. so let's be more conscious about this and i've done a a really poor job in the past but what's wonderful that's okay like now i have the pers- the, the perspective and a deeper awareness and as i enter into to, to new territory it's a, it's a brand new day new yeah. new people are in my field new energies new romantic energies it's a beautiful thing i get to like apply all this that i've learned to co-creating these people this yeah. person you know as someone that i you know that you and I even talked about this not on the podcast. Instead of focusing on where are we not in alignment, where are we in alignment? What Those are the things to, yeah. to give your attention to because it's so easy. It's so natural for us to go to, oh, where are we not in alignment? Let me start judging and creating. Uh, you're, you're not being oneness, yeah. right? You're creating just separation. just curious, I think, about also the, the great gifts that, that – that person is like get curious about where their fullness is and then like appreciate it and then they will they how can will you be a gardener for them and like help their them yeah bloom, support right? them exactly in being their their most expanded versions of themselves yeah like and then it, it will show us what kind of relation or what kind of elationship it is whether it's you know a friendship whether it's a partnership or a partnership or maybe it's a a, <coughs> a new business yep you know colleague you know i think that's that's the gift where it's like let all of your relations flower and bloom into the highest possibility that they may be. Yeah. You know, and you become the source of that yeah. because you're just puring, pouring pure love on the, everyone. The miracle food. Yeah. <laughs> miracle grow. <laughs> miracle grow. That. Yes. Yeah. It's so good. And what a wonderful place to end off for today. Chris, you amaze me. I so appreciate you showing up time and time again to share your gift with the world and with uh, the listeners and me. It's been beautiful Likewise, to have bro. you again. And uh, I look, Such I look, a beautiful reflection. <laughs> Likewise. And all of you out there, I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. You are all such beautiful reflections. This song is called Days Gone. It's by Tor, Saw Tor. Uh, at Envision Festival, like with you actually, nice. a few yeah, yeah. a few what months a ago. Epic yeah, it was so epic, and it was a sunrise set. And right before I hopped on the plane to leave, <sighs> hope you guys enjoy it. Oh, this reminds me actually, <clears throat> Enchanted Forest coming oh. up. Oh, right, right, right. Um, so we are working on getting you guys a discount code for Enchanted Forest, which is up in Mendocino on June eighth to the tenth. Such a magical. I've gap. heard this is like I um, I've. I came really close to going like two years ago and didn't for some reason. But, you know, there's so many festivals and uh, gatherings that are happening, you know, in California especially. And this is one that I've just heard time and time again. You've got to go to Enchanted Forest. you got to go so to Enchanted So good. Forest. It's at Black Oak Ranch, which I guess is like a historic <clears throat> place where like the Grateful Dead played and so many other amazing people. And it's such a like yummy family vibe. You know, it's like 5,000 people Not or too something. Big. Not too big where you really get more of that intimacy I think in a festival Mm -hmm. and um, yeah so put in positive head all caps you know for a special discount and uh, we'll see you guys there yeah Chris is telling me that uh, I'm going so I think I'm going (laughs) (laughs) awesome Uh, uh, love you guys till next time journey well
Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out.